because I'm alone, I'm lonely, and I'm also blah. Hey, what's going on everybody? It starts at X of HG Central and I'm here with another Let's Play. Today we are playing Need for Speed High Stakes for the original PlayStation 1. And today I'm also joined with... Just John. Just John. Just yeah. his name. It's all he is. Not, nothing's too special. But anyways, uh, Need for Speed High Stakes. Uh, I love this game. One of my all-time favorite racing games. I'm just going to quickly go through here to make sure everything's okay. This was my childhood. Yeah, it was my childhood. I grew up right around the time this was uh, pretty much the hit everywhere. You know, when Need for Speed was still the best thing around, but that's unfortunately not anymore. So let's just create my quick name there. Or is it X? Yep, yep, yep. Uh, and then we're just going to get it in, start... Uh, I'm not going to waste too much time, so let's go w with the... Uh, Gonna do the tournaments and the special events, uh, probably somewhere maybe in the middle, maybe uh, after the tournaments or whatnot. We'll see how it works. I'll also show off the Hot Pursuit mode, because hmm, it's kind of a necessary. Because right. those cops were absolutely unforgiving. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, m I'm gonna be playing the cops, though, because you're gonna see. So, first up in the tournaments, we have the Worldwide Roaster Classic. Uh, just two roadsters. You get the Mercedes SLK 230 and the BMW Z3 2.8. So we're going to continue onwards. And we get our first track of three. We're going to Landstrasse first, Germany. Yada yada. We're going to continue. And we got to go buy our car. So, we get, of course, we get the two cars here. We got the SLK 230 and we got the Z3 Roadster 2.8. And this is what I'm going to go with. The Z3 is really the better choice because acceleration is better, handling is better, and, uh... I think it looks better. <laughs> it looks better, yes. And it's also going to be uh, useful for something later on in the game. So, just get the choice of colors. I'm just going to go with the dark blue because it looks best in that color, in my opinion. So, we're going to buy it. Now, I have no more money because all well, they give us is 20 grand. And, well... I guess we better start this race up with Lance Strass. All right, here we go at the first track at Lance Strass. Got the Beamer here, and R O K. So it's not set for analog control, but that's okay because I don't think for this game it's ne that necessary. I'm pretty, I could. I do fine right now. If it gets any worse, I'll just change it off screen. The one thing I remember about this game is if you wreck, it punished you. Oh, yeah, it, it punished you. You take damage in this game, and your car would slow down from it and all that whatnot. Like that. Yeah, like that. And then this would break your suspension. <laughs> no, car's fine. 
Oh no, but jumping it. I should probably stop running into the back of SLKs. <laughs> They're not meant to be targets. But yeah, I still think this game holds up pretty well for an old PS1 title. It still feels nice to play and uh, it's easy to pick up and understand. Oh, I did that corner very well. I, I remember the first time I played this game, that, that corner killed me. Outright dead in the wall. Yeah. Yeah, honestly, I think after this race I'm going to switch to the analog because it just feels better than the D-pad. But not struggling too much, at least. Well, only got one other car here, Nemesis, and this red SLK. Back when uh, the AI all had uh, unique personalities. characteristics. Yeah, that's why I always. That's one of the things I always preferred on the PS1 version over the PC version. The AI was had characteristics, even though there was two uh, AI cars less. I think they went with six because it, either having eight on screen was too much for this game to particularly handle, or it was kind of that Gran Turismo mentality of just having six cars on the track at the time. One of the two, I think. But yeah, it's... Oh, D-pad. That's a wall. Yeah, that's a wall. It is a oh, wall. Oh, if I remember right on this track, you're coming up to another fun section. Yeah. My more favorite section of the tracks coming up. Well, that is if you know what you're doing, but otherwise, if you're not, well, the middle's there to greet you. Always brings you in when you open the door, to even though there's not a door. I don't even I know what I'm saying. I remember at one point, because I played the PC version, yeah. and I believe the AI's name was Shunt, that would try to ram you if you got near him. That's what Bullet does in this game. Bullet's the same thing. He's a very aggressive driver. If he gets near you, he'll try to wreck you. Yeah, when we say try to wreck, we're not saying openly trying to run you completely off the road. Oh, Bullet would try to do that for the most you. part. Like, Bullet was... It wasn't seriously so bad that he could, like, end your race, like, unless you were really unlucky, but it was still, like, the case of, um, you know, just... Don't be near him, because he may try something on you. That was... Oh, God, That's I... That's actually pretty good at taking that one. It's a pretty good line, yeah. I'd say I'm well used to this game, so I know how it handles and how it feels, so... It won't. Be, I don't think it'll be till the later races till the struggle really happens because they go they they go a little easy on you for the first while and because you oh. know I think they're just they're trying to get you used to how the game feels and then once you know oh. what you're doing they try to amp it up and it can be pretty grueling around the later end. Well, the, they all like all the old Need for Speeds followed a, a similar setup where the first couple of tracks are these kind of open sweeping corner type tracks and then the last track you end up in are hairpins and just mountain roads that are absolutely unforgiving yeah that's kind of how it works with this game the easier tracks they give you first and then later on it's the more difficult tracks they come that come afterwards except for uh, Celtic Ruins that one is one of the easier tracks in the game, and it doesn't. And for some reason, in the PS1 version, it's not till later on. Even though on the PC version, it was a starter track. It's. I believe it's the length of the track that they put in. Well, this track is longer than that, and it's. Uh, they still put this as a starter track, though. Like this is the only starter track where the default uh, lap record time is over two minutes. And there we go. Let's cross the line first. Then not not much of competition there. Oh god, the announcer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Cheesy 90s this. Congratulations. You've got a top time for this track. All right. So we got a top time.
and we came seventh on the leaderboard for with a stock Z3. <laughs> <laughs> you, you beat a Diablo's lap time. Let's yeah. just go with that. Yeah, I don't know why they made some of the slower cars with faster... I don't know. But it's just how they set it up, I guess. So, we got 2,500, but if you take damage, you get punished because you have to repair. You have to repair the bill, so we only ended up getting 2,110 points. But we did came first, so that's a total of 8 points right away. So, so far we're doing good. Alright, so next up is a fairly easy track, in my opinion, Route and Donf from France. And... Yeah, I, go ahead. I will say, one of the big differences between the PC and PlayStation version, it deducted what damage you took right then and there. Oh, yeah. Uh, the uh, PC version, you actually come back to this menu, and there's a repair car option. Mm-hmm. And if you don't have the money, which can happen, you're stuck driving a damaged car again. Yeah. Anyways, we're going to start this race at Rudantoff. Anyways, here we go with Rudantoff. Now, since we won the last race, we're actually starting already in first place. It Basically, in this, it where you start depends on how many points you have. At the start of a championship, you'll usually always start last, but if you finish first, you'll start the right, and you're leading first in the points, you'll start there. At least I believe that's how it works. But yeah, this track I'm very well familiar with, so should be quite an easy breeze through this. You know, despite this being one of the more curvy, odd tracks, this was one of my favorites in the game. Oh yeah, I, I love this track. It's 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 a good track to start with for a game because it's like, you know, it, it puts a bit of skill testing, but it also uh, eases up on you because it's a simplistic layout technically, and nothing really is meant to throw you off too much. Uh, I remember the hot air balloons. <laughs> yeah, I liked how this game had a background environment for PS1 games, which for some games back then... The background environments were like almost never. I mean, this is, and this is just straight up. You can tell EA was still being honest and trying. This is when Electronic Arts were, you know, not shit. <laughs> to put it blunt, but in yeah, this is when EA was actually really trying to uh, make sure their games were. Uh, well, interesting enough for people to buy, and ha had a lot of good reasons that people would ever want to invest their money in something like a racing game, which even back then was still, for some people, a struggle because they never liked the idea of just racing cars, but I always did, so, meh. They, they, they tempted me in 99 and it worked very well. Uh, this was the third Need for Speed game I bought. It was the third Need for Speed game I played. Because uh, the first one for me was two, then three, and then this. I had two special edition, three, which is the original Hot Pursuit, and then this, which is the one I religiously the played. <laughs> well, there's nothing wrong with playing this one like crazy. It's just, it's still well worth it even to this day, so. As, as far as the early Need for Speeds go, this has. Uh, customization to a point uh, where as you upgrade the car they start getting little spoilers and the like, little, little add-ons. Yeah, it, it, a little bit of visuals. It wasn't really anything too much because, you know, earlier technologies and whatnot, but even still, it did give a little bit of personalization, which I'm sure even back in 99 people enjoyed to see. I wish I could say more about 99, but as I was four years old at the time, well, I can't, I can't really do it any proper justice. Yeah. It was a good era for games. It was. Like, you look at... I know some people say you should stop living in the past because of nostalgia, because you need to let your nostalgia things go, but honestly, I'm sorry, it's just that this game 
when you look at it compared to the more modern titles, it, it still has a bit of a charm to it. Like, you can still come back to it after all these years, even though visually it's not as appealing and whatnot. But you, you don't care about that. You care about the way the game plays. And this game had that very well right down to the core, even though back in 99 they did argue that this wasn't too much of a leap in Beyonds of Need for Speed 3, but every time I play this compared to 3, I always just see this as the better title. Well, 3 had no real damage. The, the cop AI would just try to ram you. That's all they did. Yeah, that was... It's pretty much their only motto, it seemed like. The AI for the police in this were... Actually, you, like they had the helicopter. They would legitimately put up roadblocks. And unlike most of the racing games out there, when they put up a roadblock, it was made of concrete. I should also mention that I just finished over 20 seconds ahead of everybody else. That happens early on. Early on, yes, but after, later on, no. Also had the best lap by almost 8 seconds. Anyways. Alright, here we go. Top time for this track. Yes. <laughs> I'm just down there. Oh, we still made it though, so that's something at least. Oh. All right. So, not only did we finish first, we also took absolutely no damage, so we get a bonus $1,000 for safe driving bonus. So that should make up for the money we lost in the first race. So now, Kindiac Park in my country of Canada. Because maple syrup also, I should show, like we were mentioning in the earlier, the car upgrades. You get three level upgrades for your cars, each of which do different statistics to the car. Now, I'm going to hold on to this, and I'm gonna, not going to do it for this uh, cup for the last race, because this will come in better use for something else later on. But, for now, before we get to end doing any of that, and let me just check here. Okay, that's off. Yes! Here we go with the final race of the Worldwide Roadster Classic with Kindiac Park. Okay, so Kindiac Park in my native Canada. Some of these roads look familiar, but I don't exactly know where in Canada this is supposed to be based off of because Canada is giant. I think it was just generic Canada. Yeah, the, 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 the generic of Canadians on the generic... Uh, uh. English is not uh, my second language anymore, apparently. I will say that this is outright one of one of the better tracks in the game, and I, this was my single favorite song. <laughs> what, the song playing right now? Yeah, I haven't heard this in years. Um, I wouldn't say it's my favorite in the game, but it is a damn good one. Well, I had, like I said, I had PC version, and I had a subwoofer on my computer. <laughs> I had you know, upper-end stereo, so yeah. This was a good one. Oh yeah, I can I can agree with that then, if because when you get anything that has a upbeat sound like this and you give it the subwoofer treatment, it really livens it up and really amps you up during races. And there's the train. The wondrous train where, dear God, don't go wide here. <laughs> that train will, it's unstoppable moving around the track like it does. Well, I think in the area I was, I couldn't even I couldn't even really get hit by the train, so I'm, I was good. Oh, this corner is sharp all of a sudden. Oh, oh yeah. Hairpin at 200 miles an hour, you know? <laughs> well, it's not 200 miles an hour. It's in kilometers per hour. You know what I mean. Yeah, I know what you mean. I also kind of like that, how it's localized, where, like, the speedometer is different depending on where you go. Like, you can set it to always be miles per hour, kilometers per hour, but I like the local thing, so it's like, uh, you know, so if you're going to, like, Canada here, it's in kilometers per hour, but if you go to, like, the U.S. track, it's in miles per hour. But, uh... That's something you don't ever see in games anymore. No, it's those subtle touches that I wish they bring back, but unfortunately we'll probably never see them again. Also, t the thing, too, is that... It all, there's also the option, it's not turned on by default right away, unlike the uh, local speed, but you could also have local police, so the commentary would be like, 
uh, similar to how it would be in real life, like with either the accents or even the language. It was pretty. It was a neat touch. It. It honestly, I I kept that on. It just made the game so much more. Like there was depth, actual depth to it. Yeah. Yeah. You know? I'll probably be turning it on when I uh, we get to the hopper suits later on in this uh, LP. It's interesting because even the um, the cop cars switch up too, depending on where you're at. Yeah, I like that too. Also, one thing that this game had going for it a lot compared to others was the ability to change music on the fly, which, of course, is now a common thing in most video games now. But for '99, was uh, quite a quite an it was advancement. Unheard of. <laughs> it was yeah. You didn't you never thought of such things. It, back around this time, but this game was one of the first to do it properly. Uh, the PC version, you could actually pull the disc out. And race to and your own music, yeah. Any CD you want. That was awesome. I love that feature. Just subtle touches you can't get anymore. Nowadays, we just have EA jerking their dicks off to microtransactions. Because... Perfect example of EA's microtransaction style of play. The Sims, one of the biggest name, you know, one of the biggest games out there that they have. And average Sims game plus all the DLCs, like 300 bucks easy. Yeah, pretty much. It's not a lot. No, it wasn't. <laughs> Oh man, I never get tired of any of these three starter tracks. They're just really such good done tracks in across the line. Yeah, that was, that was a pretty solid last lap there, I'd say. Look at your time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've won by over 15 seconds. Anyways. Alright, top time, yeah. <laughs> Oh, holy crap. That's actually that's very surprising for a Z3. It's, it's, it's moving. For a factory vehicle. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah, so there we go. Not only is that, again, a first place victory, so we won all the races. We also, again, get a safe driving bonus. Hell yeah. And now... Borderlining on... Congratulations! Oh. Gold trophy. gold trophy. So yeah, we've won the Worldwide Roadster Classic Gold Trophy. Now we try competing in the original club circuit. However, we're not going to do that right away because there's another event where we could these BMW here will actually become of great use. Just save this, I guess. Nope, Versert memory card. You forgot to make one. No, I made one. I just have to add it. There. <laughs> <laughs> the the joys of playing this on PS3. Just have make your own memory cards right on the hard drive. So we're good. <laughs> I'm only going to show this once because, well, there's not really any point. Yeah. And continue. I don't remember doing that that fast on uh, PS1. No, because, again, hard drive... <laughs> So yeah, so that's going to cover it then for part one, but stay tuned for the next part of Need for Speed High Stakes, where we will be taking a look at the Weekend Road Racing Classic. So stay tuned for that, guys, on the YouTube and GameAnyone.com. Thanks for watching. <laughs>